This is why you shouldn't lie on your resume. I still getting my breath. Whoa, it's in! The things we do for science. Ugh, <laughs> why did I say it's so sexy? If you ask a regular person to make a car slippery, they're probably gonna crack out the soap. But in this test, we experiment with aerodynamics and drag, so we can investigate how a slippery car can sometimes mean a faster car. This is the science of supercars. That looks like a slippery car. Would I be right? We've all been talking about slippery supercar, slippery this, slippery that. Uh, really what it means is aerodynamic efficiency. You imagine you're a little piece of particle, you're a little bit of air. Um, how can we make your journey across our supercar as smooth and as comfortable as possible? All right, so we take away the engine, we take away the, the skill of the driver and the distractions that could influence his driving. What does make this car Fast. You've got your big ones, you've got your aero grip, you've got your mechanical grip, you've got weight transfer, that centre of gravity, and then driver skill, engine power, etc. So really, uh, when it comes to this beast in front of us, it's like where this air is being distributed, how much of it is pushing the car down, and how much uh, the, the tyre is being pressed against uh, the, the bitumen. Exactly, so we handle the laws of physics, uh, we make a car capable of doing something, and then the drivers go and try and defy those laws of <laughs> physics and, and, and maximise uh, what they've been given. It's pretty much combinations of everything, you know, small changes you can feel in the car, doesn't make much difference, but you feel the subtle changes, and, you know, that can make half a tenth of a second, but that can make all the difference. It's a wet day here in the velodrome, but supercars race in the wet and so do I. Now we are experimenting with drag, so to maximise drag, I'll be using this. And our first vehicle of the day is a bike that we call the Potato because it's very cheap. I feel like I'm riding on a ginormous parachute. All right, first lap's in, 48 seconds. Time to upgrade the vehicle, see if he can beat that still while wearing the poncho. The super cheap auto 1000 is on and right got a brilliant start. The change of the car over the evolution of, of supercars from when I've started to what I'm driving right now is a huge difference. This is it. Whoa. Close. and we're tough to it. It came with the teams in general that just becoming more and more professional with what they do. Fundamentally, the cars, they're still a, a tubular chassis with things bolted on around them, but even the shape of the exhaust or the shape of the under tray on the front bar, the shape of the rear wing, that is something that you thought was futuristic. 20 years ago. Great job by Shane. And aerodynamics is a great thing. It makes, it makes a race car faster. It basically pushes or sucks the car to the, to the track, which gives you more grip. More grip means you can go around the corners faster, which means your lap time's better. If I go back when I first drove at Bathurst, we were doing probably two minute 15 lap times. Now we're doing two minute threes, two minute fours. So we're almost sort of 10 seconds faster as a car. But again, it's not only just that side of it, is then the driver has evolved. Here it is, the slipperier bike. Let's see how fast we can go. Uh. Yeah, there's still a tightly controlled rule book in our class, but 
everything you can do to make the car as fast as possible you do. The big part of it is the hard work that goes on behind the scenes here in the workshop before you even get to a racetrack. You know, we used to paint the car from top to bottom, inside and out, but again, that's weight. So then the external part of the car we wrap now, it's lighter, it's easier, it's quicker. So we think we're saving about five kilos between the, the vinyl to the paint, so the vinyl's lighter. What does that mean? Let's talk Bathurst, biggest marquee event of the year. So five kilo difference around Bathurst is about 0.08 of a second. Not even one tenth of a second. What's that gonna do? Not a lot, right? Wrong. 161 laps. That's just under 13 seconds of difference in race time. Bathurst has been won and lost by a nose of a car by 0.2 of a second. So 13 seconds, give me that any day of the week. The vinyl is uh, heaps lighter. It's, uh, it's got aerodynamic advantages. It's by far the best thing to, uh, to use on the side of a race car. And then probably easier for repair when we crash them. So this car is a very, very impressive piece of machinery uh, and clearly there's been a lot of thought put into it to make it as slippery as possible. How would you make a human slippery? I think you apply the same principles, mate. So you, you know, frontal area, you've got to get you know, low and compact. I don't have to shave my hair or anything weird like that, do you, do you think? With the rubbish bike and wearing a poncho, I did a lap time of 48 seconds. But with the updated bike and still wearing the poncho, I got that down to 36 seconds. So once we remove the drag and we're using the updated bike and being very, very slippery, let's see how fast we can go. Smooth as a baby's bottom. So I haven't seen Danny on a bike before. We, we spoke through how slippery a supercar can be, some aerodynamic features. The only advice I gave him was sort of to tuck in, so uh, hopefully he's made it back in one piece. The velodrome, obviously, some banked corners. Uh, you've got to keep up a bit of pace to not even slide back down. So hopefully he, uh, he wasn't just giggling the whole time. We were talking about uh, some, some technical aspects. This is why you shouldn't lie on your resume. I told Red Bull that I've done this heaps before. I've never done this before. I have no idea what I'm doing. Whoa, it's in! <laughs> Here we go. Oof. All right. You got this, dude. Still getting my breath. Riding the first bike, I felt a little bit like riding through honey. Upgraded to the next vehicle. Obviously, massive benefits. But still, having that poncho on, felt like I was riding with a parachute, like someone was trying to pull me off the back. But this, slippery as the final time on the slippery bike, 29.49. Pretty damn slippery. While the drivers themselves don't necessarily need to be as slippery as a freshly shaven leg, the cars experience a remarkable difference in speed when the engineers use their full technical capability to make them as slippery as possible. <laughs> 